Hello and welcome to the Cambridge R Uni project. My name is Anna and I am a first year student studying English at Clare College, Cambridge. I started this project with the hopes of making information easily and readily accessible to prospective applicants. A sharing of honest information and helpful advice from students for students. This is why the project is called R Uni, because it is made from a collective of the student body. It is also called this because I strongly believe in widening participation at Cambridge. It is our university as state school students as much as it is anybody else's. Coming from a state school which has only ever had three applicants to Oxbridge in its entire lifetime, two being this year alone, access is deeply important to me. I want to offer a helping hand to students like me who otherwise would not get as much support as they deserve. It is important to note that this project is not affiliated with Cambridge University itself and is entirely independently run by students. Hello, my name is Daniel. I study maths at CAT. Maths is an excellent choice of subject to study if you are very interested in problem solving, abstracting from any particular problem. In maths, the question itself shouldn't matter as much as the techniques and the logic and the argument used to solve the problem. So the beauty of maths as a subject is that it is a problem-solving subject. So you kind of abstract from the ideas of here's a problem, let's solve it, to how would one solve any problems, kind of developing tools for abstract problems, logic, um, careful argument. If you look at a physics problem and you see its solution and you think that this solution is beautifully built solution. If you're thinking about how the process is the best part of problem solving, it may well be that maths is for you. The reason I chose Cambridge for maths is because the consensus is that it is on its own level for maths in the country. There is literally no other uni except maybe Oxford that gets even close to being as good a quality of undergraduate education in maths as Cambridge from an academic point of view. If you are interested in maths as an academic pursuit rather than something to apply to banking or economics, then Cambridge really is the best place in the country where you can do that. So the application process, for me, I noticed that they've got very little weight on the personal statement and submit a personal statement that's a bit more focused on just problem-solving ideas rather than extracurriculars or work experience or anything like that. In my interviews, um, they were entirely based on solving maths problems. There was nothing else that wasn't a maths problem. I just sat down, they gave me a problem to solve, I solved it. They gave me the next one, solved that one, and so on. If I got stuck on a problem, I could ask for help, and they would give me hints it, like nudge me in the right direction. So do tr try to express yourself in these interviews. Try and write down any workings that you do. Try and think aloud to show them that you're actually thinking because that's what they're there to see. They're there to see that you're thinking about the problem, not that you know a bunch of answers. The step exam, which is sat in June, that's after you've got an offer, you will be doing the step exam, which is a very hard exam but very, very worth it. If you are at the level of applying to maths, then the questions should be quite enjoyable. It's hard, but try not to be scared off by it. In first year of maths, you will have 12 lectures per week, as well as two supervisions per week, and that means 14 contact hours. In second and third year, the hours are a bit more variable, but between 12 and 15, you're set to problem sheets per week. Each problem sheet will have between 10 and 15 questions on it, usually around 15. And these questions are designed to be very challenging. They will take you a good part of an hour or two hours or more to solve. You're not expected to complete the problem sheets. However, you are expected to give them a good shot. So expect to spend around 20 or 30 hours a week on problem sheets and adding to that the 14 contact hours means that your typical workload will be around 40 to 50 hours per week, excluding any extra maths you choose to do, such as math societies. The most important thing that you're going to have to be focusing on is step. Ideally start um, practicing for that 
at this in the summer between year 12 and year 13 there are a lot of free step resources offered by cambridge which you can access they will be very hard when you start them they will get easier when you keep doing them other advice um try and harass your school as much as possible to sign you up for as many olympiads as possible scientific olympiads they don't have to be in maths but the competition experience like really really hones your problem solving ability and that is what's really necessary in the application process for maths when you're doing maths at cambridge specifically you are going to be surrounded by some of the smartest people in the country i don't just mean the professors the student body as well you're going to be around people who are significantly smarter than you and that is such a good learning opportunity learn as much as you can from them when you actually get here try and join as many societies as you can try and just hang out with friends as much as possible as i've been saying the problem sheets aren't designed for you to finish them so you could spend hours and hours and hours toiling away on a problem sheet or you could spend those hours actually enjoying yourself with the various opportunities that cambridge has to offer it is an absolutely stellar place to live your life outside of academics and please do live that life because the, you will regret spending all your time just studying hi i'm holly i'm doing maths at claire and hi i'm julius i'm also doing maths at claire there's something i really like about the sort of juxtaposition of the critical logical thinking whilst also the creative side because i find it really interesting that you have to kind of constantly be changing how you're thinking um, and kind of fully evaluate an idea before you sort of see where you're going next yeah definitely and i think the way that you can sort of find out if that's the sort of thing you enjoy in school is just by doing problems doing mm. like if you can get your hands on just any extra problems be that olympiad or a level or what or step or whatever yeah. you want to do like if you enjoy doing problems then you'll enjoy doing maths at uni um well for me obviously there is the fact that it's so um it's so challenging academically and i always wanted to be at a university where i was going to be pushed academically because for me that's the part of maths that is the most interesting and the most fun but also just coming here on open days and stuff i always felt like the city was so beautiful and i just I just felt like it was the place that I wanted to be. I really like the teaching style of two to one supervisions where you have two students and a supervisor yeah. and you go through all of the questions and you can go through everything that you don't really understand. And it's quite nice because they have the time to sort of go through, go through things for you. Um, and then, of course, also the there's loads of extracurricular stuff. Yeah, that yeah. I really yeah. enjoy because whatever you so enjoy, many, there's, there's something yeah. for you. It's really great. So on Mondays to Saturdays, we have two lectures a day, which are an hour, well, roughly an hour each. Yeah, um, and then we also have two hours of supervision per week. Some colleges also do like small group teaching with about maybe between five and ten people in a class. Yeah. Um, so that's basically just extra contact hours, but it depends where you apply. So we have two example sheets a week that we have to do and hand in for our supervisions. And these example sheets are basically questions on things you've been covering in the lectures and also a few extra sort of challenging questions to get you thinking. Probably what the majority of the workload is through the, throughout the week, I'd say. Yeah, definitely. They're definitely more work than... You'll put more time into doing example sheets than you will into, say, lectures, I think. Yeah. Um, and they really are... There are challenging questions on there, so you're not... It's not like in A-levels where, you're like for homework, you're given a set of questions and you have to do every single one of them yeah. um, perfectly, basically, or at least try to. Yeah. And if you're doing an example sheet, you're not, you're not necessarily even expected to finish all the questions. Mm -hmm. As long as you've thought about them, that's really the main thing. Um, yeah, and that absolutely. takes up the most time, I think. How was the application process for you guys? Well, we had to get our personal statements in quite early for the Oxbridge deadline, which is also quite nice because it leaves more time to sort of focus on A-levels in year 13 and also prepare for the interviews, mm. which are quite quite an important yeah, part of yeah. the application process. Yeah. Yeah. I would say, and um, don't stress too much about your personal statement, because there are other parts of the application process, especially if you're going for Cambridge, mm -hmm. that are just more important, I think. So then successful at interviews. Yeah. Um, then there's STEP, which happens at the same time as A-levels, yeah. which seems like a very, very daunting exam, especially at the beginning of year, year 13. For sure. Yeah. But it gets, um, I guess, as, you, as you've done more maths, mm. it gets sort of, you find, you start to get used to the sort of styles and exactly. tricks you can and do. Yeah, so much of it is about tricks yeah. and the style of questions rather than like 
are you naturally good enough to do this question? Because mm -hmm. it's not about that. It's about doing the practice, getting the work in. Yeah. Um, just, yeah, trying your best to do as best as you can. And, Absolutely. And the other thing about STEP is you don't necessarily have to get the grades and you can still yeah. get into Cambridge. Um, they will do it on a case-by-case -case basis. I'd say my biggest piece of advice is probably try and start doing STEP as early as you can. Yeah. And it doesn't matter if you can't do all the questions or do any, in fact, because I definitely couldn't when I started. Yes, yeah, um, But just thinking about them kind of helps for, I'd say it's also good for preparation for your interviews. Yeah. If you manage to start by that point. Yeah, and if you're um, looking at STEP, then maybe start with STEP 1 and work up to yeah, STEP 2 and 3, definitely. which is what Cambridge wants. The other thing I would say is that if you get an in invitation to interview, then I would look at something called TBO Problem Solving Booklet because it's a booklet of about 150 short problems in it. Um, and I looked at it before my interview and two of the questions that were in it ended up being in my <laughs> interview. There's a lot of work to do. And if you ever have time, which you probably will do at the beginning of term, just to get ahead of it, mm. then I would do that because what I did was basically do no work for the first week, maybe even two weeks. And then we suddenly had an example sheet due in like one day or something. Um, and I ended up having to stay up until 5am doing maths, which was not a fun experience. So if you ever have time to just like get a little bit ahead, don't don't work too much, mm. don't stress yourself out. But if you can get ahead, I'd, then do it. I'd also say with example sheets, it's very different to sort of the A-level type homework where you're just sort of repetitively using things you've learned in the um, in your lessons, whereas with the example sheets, it's basically one quick question to test on a few of each point you've learnt in the lecture, and then yeah. and then the other ones really take a lot of time because it requires a lot of thinking. So yeah. don't don't be scared if the example sheet takes a lot of time. Try not to be too intimidated by either the stereotype of people that you're going to find here, mm. or like the people that you'll meet at interview or whatever, because everyone will seem really clever to you, and you'll probably be really scared by them. But yeah. they are just normal people and they're, they're just like you and everyone, everyone's feeling imposter syndrome. So don't worry about it. Yeah, absolutely. And there are so many different types of people. Yeah, but. yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. And you'll find your crowd once you're here, I'm sure. Yeah. Hiya, I'm Grace. I'm a second year studying medicine at St Catherine's College. I chose to study medicine because I wanted a career that centres around people. I find people really interesting, like why our minds work, why our bodies work, and why sometimes these stop working, or why in some people they work differently. And medicine is just the perfect subject to let me explore these concepts and the scientific mechanisms underlying them. I really like the scientific emphasis in the preclinical years of Cambridge because it means by the time you step onto the wards you've got a really strong scientific foundation and then I also really like the collegiate system. There's 12 of us medics in my year at my college and it means if we ever don't understand anything at least one of us will and they'll be able to explain it to the rest of us and it's just a really nice sense of community on top of your wider year groups, you don't feel lost. Also, there's just a lot of opportunities to explore your subjects or a variety of subjects. So there'll be talks run by MedSoc or other societies throughout your years in Cambridge. And then also in third year, I know it's not um, specific to Cambridge, but it's certainly not universal across all medical schools. You get a year where you can just explore quite a wide range of subjects. But typically, I'd have around 20 contact hours. Um, on top of that, I have one essay a week this year. Last year, it was three essays a week, which was quite heavy, but we had fewer practicals, so it all balanced out. All in all, we typically spend around 40 to 50 hours a week doing work. A piece of advice I wish I'd known before studying my subject was that supervisions or dissection is not scary, it's not a test, it's just a really good opportunity to talk with experts in your subject to help you understand better things you might find difficult or complex processes. My advice to any applicants would be to get comfortable speaking out loud about your subject prior to the interview. So it doesn't need to be any formal interview practice. It could be explaining osmosis to your dog or a wall or anyone who lives with you. Just so you get comfortable voicing your opinions and your thought process out loud in words rather than in writing. Hi, I'm Kieran. Uh, I'm Seth. And we're both first year studying medicine at Clare College, Cambridge. We're both doing medicine because hopefully uh, we both want to be doctors by the end of these six years. Yeah, I don't know why else anyone does medicine. We want to be doctors. But I think personally, I wanted to study medicine here because I like the science of it. 
we cover so much like detail and I think that's really pretty interesting if you're from a more academic bent. I think I really wanted to go to Cambridge because I wanted to learn the science in more depth in the first three years before going mm. on to the clinical stuff and the city is also really beautiful. It's amazing to live here as a student because mm -hmm. you have yeah. such access, you have such like availability. Mm -hmm. You're right in the centre of this like gorgeous, you know, ancient city. Mm -hmm. A little intense, but yeah, yeah, we cope. But the application process, as you're probably aware, there are a lot of steps. So if you're applying for Cambridge, you're probably doing the uh, UCAT as well as the BMAT. Yeah. And then you've got interviews and you've also got to write your personal statement before you apply. So it's quite yeah. intense, but... You, yeah, I mean, for us, it's especially, there's a lot of work. Um, you obviously two exams, you interview at every uni. There's a lot, it is pretty tough. It will take up most of your year 13 and a lot of your year 12 too. And you do learn things from it. Yeah. From preparing for the exams, from preparing for interviews. So it is enjoyable yeah. and you learn a lot, even though it's difficult sometimes. I think especially as like a year eleven, year eleven, year twelve, looking at what the call, looking at what it's like to get into the course, it can seem so overwhelming. But you really just do it like bit by bit by bit, and then it's pretty manageable. I think. Yeah, and it's definitely worth going through it if you want to. Yeah. Go to medical school. Yeah, definitely don't be put off yeah. by the application process. For the application process, because there are lots of steps, um, I think a, advice I'd give is to just take it one step at a time because it's all spread out, and as long as you just focus on one thing and don't get too stressed about the whole process, then uh, you should be able to manage it. Yeah, I mean, uh, practicing for the exams is a big one. Don't just sort of walk in and, and think, you know, you'll ace it, because you do need to prep for it. Um, and it's definitely worth taking the time to do, do the practice exams. And otherwise, I think, do volunteering. Mm, yeah. Yeah. If you, that's something you should probably, one of the first things you should be doing, yeah. because um, it shows commitment and it'll be a really useful experience for you to draw on. So. Mm. Make sure, say, if you're in year 12 now, or even year 11, if you want to get started then, uh, try and get some volunteering, whether that's in a care home or any other setting where you're interacting yeah. with people. If you can't get work experience, don't stress about that. I mean, I don't think any of my interviews actually asked me about my work experience directly. It was always more general. I mean, if you're in sort of year 13, you should probably start thinking about interviews. So just mm -hmm. when you're writing your personal statement, maybe think, oh, this is something I could mention mm -hmm. in an interview and just think about how you could do that. Practice a lot. Um, for your interviews, just yeah. get people to ask you questions, ask other people questions. The admission process is so drawn out. You have to start sorting work experience in year 11, year 12, and then you'll sit your first exam in year 12 summer and won't get any offers till January, so about six months later, if that. And it's so, it has the potential to be so demoralizing, I think, especially at some bits, like when you're revising for the exams, especially for me. So I think the main thing is just remember, you know, it does get better. I think it's so much more enjoyable to be in medical school than it is to get into medical school. Mm -hmm. So really just don't stress about it. Yeah, remember everyone's struggling with each part of the process and it's designed to be difficult to yeah. differentiate between people. So you're probably doing a lot better than you might sometimes feel. And throughout the whole process, don't be swayed by what you think you should be doing. For example, in your personal statement, in your interview, just try and be genuine and yeah yeah don't be influenced by what you think you should be saying or you should be writing just too much be honest be mm. yourself it will the interviewers can tell and like i think it'll take you a yeah. lot further the workload um in terms of contact hours we have about two lectures a day sometimes three or yeah. more but usually it's two and for our college we have uh three or four supervisions a week yeah although at the most i think we've had six yeah. five five a I lot think. Um, and, yeah. yeah, and you get set essays in some of those supervisions, yeah. so some weeks we've had uh, one essay, sometimes two or three. Yeah, I think four's the most I've had in a week. Yeah, and that will yeah. vary between college. Yeah, so it's worth noting you do get a lot more at some places. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, we have practicals. So this year, because of COVID, we've only had about four, two hours of dissection a fortnight. But I think normally you'd have dissection a couple of times a week at least. And then there's also practicals for uh, the other modules of your course too. You have to sort of treat it like a nine to five, but it's manageable, you know? Yeah, it's definitely manageable and it's quite fun. So if you find it interesting, then you'll enjoy it. So I don't really think you can do much prep. If you're, if you, you know, you've got your offer, you've passed your ALS, I think just enjoy your summer. Everything you do in medicine is going to be new to you, so it'll be taught like it's new to you. Mm -hmm. We didn't, I don't think we got set any prep work really. No, very little, and it was all optional. Yeah, so honestly, I would just enjoy your summer. If you're really keen and you really want to do work before, you can just revise your L-level biology yeah. bits that are human and relevant, and some chemistry if you want, but really they'll teach you what you need to know 
once you ask. Hey guys, uh, I'm Rory. I'm a second year natural scientist at St. Catharines College, Cambridge. Uh, I'm studying ecology, evolution, and the history and philosophy of science. I'm also the president of the St. Catharines College JCR, which is kind of like a student council. And as you can see by my jumper, I'm the former science editor for Varsity. I chose natural sciences because the course is just so much broader than anywhere else. At school, I was always a mathematician. I applied to become a chemist, and now I'm an ecologist studying the history and philosophy of science. I wouldn't have had that opportunity on any other course. Um, and I think just the, the choosing your modules year by year really gives you flexibility. And because I'm just so indecisive, uh, that was the key factor for me choosing natural sciences. Why Cambridge? Firstly, it actually offered natural sciences, which gave me the breadth that I wanted. And secondly, I'd only actually been to Cambridge. I think I remember I was actually fairly confident about it. Um, and the reason being was that I was the first ever Russell Group student from my school. So I had no kind of history, no anything to fall back on. By the same token, nothing to kind of discourage me from going for Cambridge. And so I felt like I'd apply and uh, I was kind of optimistic about it. My contact hours have varied massively. Uh, in first year, I had six 9 a.m.s a week. And this year, all my lectures are online, partially because of COVID. Um, but also all my modules are now essay based. So the flexibility of natural sciences means that I've gone from having loads of contact hours to very, very few. So the workload for my subjects is three essays a week, pretty much consistently. Um, some weeks that varies down to two, um, but usually it's just one essay per subject, um, plus the sort of wider reading around it. And I've got one online lab. Also got the ecology project, um, which is essentially just a coding project. Um, using the language R and just sort of handling some data. For me, it's regarding the uh, Brazilian rainforests and analysing acoustics there. But that's only a few hours a week. Uh, so the workload is actually pretty okay. The piece of advice I'd give about the application process is just kind of go for it. In your personal statement, don't hold back or be understated. Um, also, don't stress about it too much because a lot of colleges don't read your personal statements. Um, also, in the interview, just make sure that you kind of you're talking. They don't want you to sit there in silence and suffer. They want you to be there. And even if you know you're wrong, tell them what you're thinking and tell them why you think it's wrong. Because they want you to show that you're sort of active, dynamic and talkative. Um, and you're not going to hold back. So the piece of advice I'd give myself is not to listen to the stereotypes, um, particularly regarding subject choice. There's this idea that taking sort of the physics e maths -y subjects are harder than taking, um, or more respectable than taking other subjects. And honestly, just go with what you enjoy because it doesn't matter what other people perceive your subjects to be. I've never been happy with my education and I'm currently sat here writing history and philosophy essays. Never thought I would be, but this is now what I, I like doing. So just tailor your degree to what you enjoy. Cambridge is literally for anybody provided that you're capable enough to get here, uh, regardless of demographic or socioeconomic barriers. And also don't feel bad if you need to ask for financial assistance. There is so much money in Cambridge that you're better off if you're poor coming to Cambridge than going anywhere else. I received the full bursary from my college and from the university and full maintenance loans. And honestly, it's so good knowing that there's kind of money there to uh, back me up. Having grown up with not much, there are a lot of students here and there's a lot of provision for people who are from backgrounds like yours and mine. My name's Abby. I do biological natural sciences at Clear College. So I picked biological natural sciences or Bionatsky um, as it's known because of the flexibility of the course. So within natural sciences, you can really kind of tailor the course to what you're interested in. I'm taking kind of pure uh, biology modules, but if I wanted to, I could take modules from chemistry or earth sciences. And that flexibility was really important to me because when I was applying for a course, I didn't I didn't really know if biology was what I wanted to do. The modules that you cover um, in first year and kind of beyond relate to things that I'm really interested in. Evolution and cell biology, um, you get a lot of them first year, which I really liked. As far as why I picked Cambridge, I think it was mainly because I really wanted to be in an environment where it was cool to learn and it was cool to be a nerd. And the schools I've been to in the past, it's kind of been frowned upon to be like really fascinated by what you're learning. So. Um, I can definitely say that it's really cool to be in an environment where everyone is really passionate. It's cool to be really fascinated by what you're studying. As far as the application process, it's a lot. For natural sciences, like, there's a lot you have to do. You have to do, obviously, the personal statement. Um, you also have to fill out an SAQ, which is like um, an extra an extra form um, slash personal statement, kind of on top of what you send off through UCAS. And there's an admission assessment called the NSAA, which um, I found really challenging. 
the time constraints are quite difficult, so I, I had to do kind of a lot of revision for the NSAA. And also there's obviously the interview. So I had two interviews over a couple of days. Um, the first one I thought went absolutely horrendously, which I think it's, it's normal to come out of an interview and think you've done really badly. It was quite an unfamiliar situation for me because I hadn't been in a position before where I'd been really pushed and really kind of forced to think outside the box. It was definitely a really interesting experience and I learned a lot from it, but it was unlike anything I'd experienced before. Um, and my second interview went a lot better because I'd kind of relaxed a bit more. As far as contact hours, uh, natural sciences is a really intense course, <laughs> however you look at it. So I have 12 hours of lectures a week and then I have four supervisions a week, so one for each module, 12 hours of practicals. So I think it probably works out at about 28, 30 hours a week, but obviously there's um, quite a lot of extra work on top of that. So work for your supervisions and like your own notes and stuff like that. The experience I've had so far is, you know, you can expect to work evenings and weekends. It is a lot, but for the most part, um, I think as long as, yeah, as long as you're interested in what you're learning, um, it really, it's definitely manageable. I think you do have to get quite good at managing your time um, just because there is so much work to do. I would say, number one, give it a go, even if you don't think you're gonna get in. I didn't think I was gonna get in. Obviously the, the application process is very long-winded um, and it involves quite a lot of effort. You're not going to lose anything by applying. Don't worry about feeling like an imposter. It's quite easy to get here and to feel like everyone's smarter than you. You don't deserve to be here. I think everyone kind of experiences that at some point, but, and I, I definitely kind of dealt with that in the first couple of weeks. I think it is, it is normal and you just kind of have to remind yourself that, you know, at Cambridge, you're not going to be, <laughs> you're probably not going to be, um, you know, top of your year like you, like you maybe were at school. Just to kind of accept that that's normal um, and to not let it stress you out that much. Hi, I'm Abby and I do veterinary medicine here at Clare. Kind of anomalous with a lot of vets that I've spoken to in that I didn't want to do it like ever since I was a little girl. I was very interested when I was younger, but I sort of deviated from that pathway. I think in year 12, being able to go and do work experience in a vet practice really encouraged me to do the subject. The thing that drew me to Cambridge Vet School was it's a very small one in comparison to the others. There's only like 70 to 80 in each year. It was really nice to get to know everyone. I thought that it's a really good environment um, to be able to like explore anything that you're interested in. Where you're surrounded by people who are also really passionate about their subject, it motivates you to find out more about your your expertise. The contact hours for veterinary medicine at Cambridge can be a little bit intense. So maybe 25 plus contact hours a week of lectures, dissections, practicals and animal man management sessions and that's not really including the supervision that you have. However, that being said, there is plenty of time to still unwind and get involved in societies. There's still plenty of time to do the things you enjoy and as long as you stay on top of the work it is fairly manageable. Uh, the workload, well, I think that depends on how much and how willing you are to be studious. For me personally, I find that like I really do need to take breaks. So I'll do maybe a little bit of recapping on the lectures that we've watched that week, maybe a little bit of anatomy revision and try and assimilate as much information as possible. Then again, you are busy. You do have the holiday time to try and like take in everything that you've learned. And also you like you want to have a good time as well. You don't just want to work yourself to death. You do get maybe three essays a week. First I was like, oh my God. And I still am. As long as you plan for it, stay on top of it, you can absolutely find that time to hang out with your friends, do stuff that you enjoy. I think the application process for Vet Med at Cambridge, um, for me, was really like, it felt daunting going into it. It was very different to the rest of the vet schools and how they uh, like modulated their acceptances and their offers. And I remember going into the admissions test being really, really nervous. But I think it's actually kind of enjoyable in the sense that they're just testing your problem solving skills and um, the questions that they asked weren't like super, super hard and they don't test stuff that you haven't covered really. It's just about your application knowledge and how you're gonna like figure stuff out yeah it's really time pressured <laughs> and that was stressful because i think towards the end a lot of people like scramble to find answers and just guess the interview process i i had heard like horror stories so i was going into it thinking right 
this is it, like the deciding factor. At one point the professor rolled his eyes at me during the interview because I was talking about DNA mutation and how one substitution might not affect the rest of the chain length in terms of the protein that it coded for. I did get an eye roll, <laughs> I did, and that really sort of knocked me down and I was like, right, okay, this is it, I'm just gonna quit now, quit while you're ahead. But I think that as long as you're thinking aloud and, you know, it's okay to make mistakes. Yeah, stressful, daunting, but overall quite enjoyable and really unique. I wish that I'd have known to prepare a bit more. Week one started and I was like, ah, and then week two started and it started ramping up. But yeah, I wish I was more prepared emotionally, I guess. As long as you try and understand what's going on in the lectures, don't worry too much about committing everything to memory, but just trying to sort of see where they're going with this is pretty useful. And then maybe a little bit of consolidation at the weekend would help you. But also getting that balance in is really important because this is a really intense call. You don't want to work yourself to death. You still want to have those good experiences with your friends. One thing maybe I'd say about applying to Cambridge Vet School is just consider the feel of the, the city because there's only eight vet schools across the country anyway. I feel like it's, it's more important to see how you might slot in with uh, student life there because you're there for a long time, five or six years six years at Cambridge, I think five years everywhere else, but I haven't checked out all the vet schools, so I'm not sure. Yeah, it's really important to primarily consider if you just like the energy and the, the feel of the city and the students here, sometimes you just have a gut instinct of where you want to be. And Cambridge is a small city, you know, there's not a huge nightlife, so maybe you'd rather like go to a different vet school and have more of that nightlife. Because the terms are so short, the workload is so compact, so you know, if you maybe want more of an opportunity for a nightlife, maybe consider other options. But um, equally, Cambridge is a lovely city and a really good chance to, to really get into what you're studying. So just see what you vibe with. <laughs> I think the application process, um, when it comes to it, don't panic too much about it. For the admissions test, I'd say maybe do some practice uh, past papers because they, they help you get a grasp on what they're really looking for compared to the mark scheme. You know the drill, it's just like practicing for an exam. The interview process, also don't fret too much. We all make mistakes in that high pressure environment. They're, they kind of, they understand that, you know, you're gonna stumble on your words sometimes. But if you pick yourself back up from those mistakes, don't dwell on them. Try and correct yourself. Um, and yeah, don't try not to freeze up because if you do freeze up, they are going to nudge you in the right direction. Don't also worry too much about work experience because from my interview, they didn't really talk about work experience or like why you want to be a vet at all. It's purely academic. Um, they did ask me a little bit about work experience, but it was more um, testing my application of A-level knowledge so far. So like, oh, so you saw this case in your work experience, but how would you test clinically for it? perhaps based on like the knowledge that you have so far, which was cool. Um, it's not too difficult and it's not too taxing. I mean, <laughs> they ask you difficult questions, but um, like the personal ones, they don't tend to touch on. I've heard some people who do get asked more personal, like, oh, why do you want to be a vet questions? Um, but don't worry if it's just purely academic um, because they just want to see your thought process. So getting practice, for uh, the interviews would be really helpful, asking your teachers to do some practice runs with you and then trying to express your thoughts logically through a problem is really, really good uh, skills. So yeah, don't panic too much and good luck. I applied to do psychology here, um, which is known as psychological and behavioural sciences, um, really because it was my favourite out of my A-levels and I really enjoyed it. Um, in lower sixth, I was considering doing physics, which is another of my levels, um, and then I eventually decided on psychology because I enjoyed it more. That was really the extent of it <laughs> to begin with. Um, when I arrived here, um, um, I was told that you can take, you, you have to take two core papers in psychology and you have to take two optional modules in um, a variety of other subjects. Um, and I was drawn to two archaeology papers, so I took those. 
Um, so actually, to start off with, I was doing half psychology and half archaeology. Um, it occurred to me a few weeks in that I wasn't really enjoying the psychology at all, but I was really loving the archaeology. Um, and so I swapped degree course. I'd never really considered archaeology before as a subject, as a field, as something I could do in the future. Um, I haven't taken history in a long time. Um, so it really snuck up on me out of the blue. Um, and I could never have seen myself studying archaeology at university. Um, if you told me that a few years ago, I would have said you, you'd be mad. Um, but I really, I really was just enjoying it more. And I thought uh, it makes sense to be doing a degree course that I enjoy, um, rather than worrying about what's going to happen in the future with jobs, prospects or anything. I changed. Um, and the reason I chose my subject is because I was enjoying it. Um, I actually didn't really want to come when I applied. <laughs> um, my brother was already here, um, so I knew the city a little bit. Um, and obviously the university has a reputation um, of being a very good one in the UK. Um, so I thought I might as well try. Um, and so I applied, but I never really expected to get in. Um, and I never really intended to come here. Um, I had my heart set on some other universities, um, which ended up one of them as my second choice. I never really expected to, to get into Cambridge. Um, my view of Cambridge was quite negative as well. It was definitely of sort of poncy, Eton boys and gowns. Um, being very, you know, close-minded and studying literature and all of that. Um, and so I kind of thought I didn't really want to come either. Um, even if I did get in, it didn't feel like my kind of place. But I, as I went through the process of applying and got further and they kept letting me continue to the next stage, um, I, I started considering it more, whether it would be a good idea. Um, and I came to the conclusion that if I, if I did get the place, it would probably be more beneficial to me to come, um, even if I didn't enjoy it, um, because of job prospects in the future. I am so happy that I accepted it, and I'm so happy that I decided to try in the first place, even if I never expected to get in, or really intended to come at all, um, because it is so different to how I thought it was, <laughs> um, and I'm really happy here. The number of people who would give their right arm across the world to um, get into this university and I've always felt slightly guilty that I didn't actually work that hard to get in here. Um, I didn't work that hard because I didn't really have my heart set on the university so I didn't really try as hard as I probably would have done if I really really wanted to come. Um, in the end I think this actually helped me quite a lot. Um, I wasn't stressed in the interview, um, I was quite calm and I probably gave them the impression I was um, just more of a, a calm person than I actually am. Um, and I think it actually really helped me um, and had a clear mind in the interview as well. So I didn't really want to come to Cambridge when I applied, uh, mainly because of its reputation. Um, but I'm really glad that I did apply and I'm really glad that I did accept the place because um, I'm really happy. <laughs> One thing I didn't realise about the interview process um, is that often if the interview goes really, really badly, um, you haven't completely stuffed your chances of coming. Um, everyone says that interview, interviews go badly. Um, that is just a fact. And in some cases, if somebody has found the interview very easy, the interviewer has realised that the interviewer's interviewee isn't a potential candidate and has just asked them easier questions. If they see potential in you, they push you and they really ask you horrible questions that a lot of the time they don't expect you to have an answer to. So if your interview goes awfully, don't lose hope. <laughs> it might still be all okay. <laughs> in general time, I'd have... Um, two lectures a week uh, of about an hour for each paper um, and I'm doing four papers so that's around eight hours of lectures a week 
um, and they give you reading material, research papers, case studies to look at. Um, and then I have su supervisions for each of my papers. Um, so I have, some of them I have every week and some of them every two weeks. I think in other subjects less frequently than that as well. Um, and I have to prepare an essay for each supervision. Um, and then it is marked um, and I discuss it with the supervisor and the other supervision partners. Um, we talk about the essay and different ways to approach it and about the content of the lectures. There are also practical sessions, um, learning how to use the software and more practical elements of how to do an excavation, that sort of thing that happen on an irregular basis. And there's also coursework um, in the first year, uh, which isn't too bad. Workload for psychology is um, pretty similar, just um, pretty similar in terms of having the lectures and then preparing essays for supervisions um, and also reading a lot of research papers and learning the basis behind them. The workload is definitely uh, more than A-levels, especially at the moment as I'm catching up. Um, I suppose that's to be expected because it's the next stage of education, um, but it's a lot harder because you have to um, you have to make yourself do it. There's no teacher telling you to do your work, really. If you don't turn up to a lecture or supervision, you might be hunted down a little bit, but not not to any of the same extent as um, A level, um, and even not writing essays. A lot of people just missed one or missed quite a few actually. Um, so it's really down to you to do the work. So even if it's the same amount as A level, it does become harder because you have to find the motivation to do it. That isn't that bad during lockdown because there isn't much else to do apart from work. <laughs> it does become harder when you have to decide between going out, working, sleeping, um, what you're going to do with your evening. The workload is definitely enough to have free time. Um, going on walks especially, doing creative things for me. Um, and uh, I'm glad I'm not working <laughs> constantly um, but yeah the workload is definitely more than A-levels um, and it's not always expected that you do absolutely everything if you need an extension if you need to just not do an essay one week they don't mind it's fine life is hard sometimes I didn't realize after all she was an essay subject I didn't really know how to write essays um, I did maths physics and psychology at A-level um, so I knew a bit of how to write essays in psychology, but not really to the same extent, not the length, and I didn't really know how to put my own opinion in an essay. Um, so I wish I'd known really what the, the content of the course would be in terms of that. I wish I'd known while doing, well, like when I was still doing psychology, I wish I'd known it was going to be very different to A-level. Um, I didn't really expect it to be so difficult. Um, at A level you have a textbook and you learn the studies that you're given um, and it's very spoon fed in a way um, and here you really you have to have the motivation to find everything yourself <laughs> um, if you need to um, talk about certain research papers in an essay you have to go out and find them yourself um, and be able to reference them yourself um, there aren't set um, uh, case studies or papers that you're supposed to learn. When I applied I didn't really have my heart set on Cambridge at all um, and I was definitely not expecting to get a place or really an interview. I didn't know anyone else that had applied to do psychology at Cambridge so I didn't have any basis to go on. There were some courses that you could go to at my secondary school um, which sort of prepared you for Oxbridge and for the interviews and all of it. Uh, and I didn't go to them because I didn't want to come. <laughs> it really was approaching the deadline to apply um, when I thought, you know, <laughs> I might as well try. So I put in my application and somehow ended up with an interview um, after doing my assessment. And I think the application process for me was quite smooth because I didn't really mind that much um, about getting in. 
I was definitely not stressed in the interview um, and that really helped me have a clear mind um, because I just didn't I didn't really mind about coming um, I was treating it like a nice day out to a lovely city um, a little break from school um, and an opportunity to talk with some um, expert psychologists the process was quite smooth for me and I was definitely surprised when I got my place